can build like a Delaware type empire. When you're there in front of your opponent, you know, you, you know when you have to throw a hard one or. Oscar's tell me some really good motivating tips. He really got me going. I'm a good looking guy and it's a big minus in boxing because no one takes me that seriously. When it comes to boxing, I'm as serious as a heart attack. Round two, jam, Paul. Paul and Gilbert, they had agreed on going four rounds together. How do you feel? I guess. I guess. That's all here. But uh, after two rounds, Paul didn't want to spar anymore. For whatever reason, his, he's just not there. You know you got to fight four rounds, though. You're right. You know you're right. OK. Paulie's all right, man. Can he box? I don't know. He's kind of a pretty boy. He don't even look like he's ever been touched. All right, guys, get in the van. It's time for your next competition. We're headed to the desert. When we arrived at the airstrip, I had no idea what they were going to have everybody do. You see these big trucks. OK, guys, today's competition is designed to test your stamina. Your job is to pull this truck with your confidence in the back all the way to the end of the finish line. That's over two times the weight, over a quarter of a mile. We're supposed to drag them up a quarter mile. Knew I was in for a, a tough situation because those the trucks were big. It was going to be a hard pull. We'll run two heats of four. The fastest time will win. We saw the trucks. I was like, oh my god, you know, it's like we, we've never tried this at home. This is crazy. Is he going to be able to do it? The winner of this competition will be $10,000 richer, and more importantly, he'll be the number one fighter for the week. It's really important because whoever wins this is automatically ranked number one. And of course, I feel I'm number one, and you know, that's what I want to be, number one. Barrea, Bachman, you're sitting pretty in the winner's circle already? Get out of here. Confidant in the truck. The rest of you guys down to the finish line. You carrying a few hundred pounds on your back. Or uh, you know, we pull my uncle in back to truck, so I'm kind of like uh, like a horse carriage ride out in New Orleans, you know? Once I have my focus set, it's like the blinders are on. Nothing gets in my way. I will let nothing stop me. I am unstoppable, unbeatable. On your mark, get set! The competitions are getting more and more intense. We have to run with pickup trucks attached to a harness, and we have to pull two tons for a quarter mile. On your mark, get set, go! And then Jimmy passed him, and so I was just yelling, like, go! Keep going! Don't give up now! And the winner of the first heat is Jimmy Mintz with a time of 1 minute, 19 seconds. I don't think anybody pushed harder than me in this competition. Man, you were flying. Yeah, Paul, you were flying. You were... Stephanie's presence here is going to definitely help keep me calm and help me to stay focused. I think I'm the best person to push his buttons. All right, second heat, up to the starting line. Let's go, let's go. The time to beat is one minute, 19 seconds. Aside from the money, man, what's at stake is uh, the respect and a little bit of intimidation. You know, a guy sees me pulling a truck, imagine what I'm going to do to him. Glenda cheering me on. I'm trying to get this truck started, and um, all of a sudden, I felt something pulling my leg. And it hurt, but the blood's flowing. I got, finally got this truck moving. Lewis was struggling with the wind and all that dust flying in his face, and you know, I wish I could go out there and help. Renee, 
just blew by all of us. He looked like a man on a mission. He looked like Forrest Gump. Lewis is getting to the end, and all of a sudden, he falls back. I didn't know if he fainted. I didn't know if he fell. I didn't know what happened. Oh, damn, man. I was like, oh, crap. I thought he cracked his skull. I heard him when he hit the ground. It sounded like a big splatter. Tire ran over and over his rope. You all right, brother? What happened was uh, Lewis, his rope got caught under the front right tire of the uh, truck, jerked him back. You got one question here, man. And we lost uh, Mike. Mike made it to the end and then collapsed, pulled his knee out. They were trying to get him up, and as soon as he will get up, he will come right back down. He was like, his leg was very weak. Mikey pulled a hamstring, but Louis fell and hit his head. I really hope he's okay. I know you guys are worried about Mike and Lewis. They're on their way to the hospital. But right now, it's time to announce our winner. I want to tell you how proud I am of you. And you guys pulled two tons, a quarter of a mile. Jimmy, you won the first heat. Renee, you won the second heat. It was a tight race. Only six seconds difference. And the winner, Jimmy Mintz, with a minute and 19 seconds. Jimmy really pulled himself out of the fire by beating me. And I'm pretty upset about that, pretty surprised. Congratulations, son. $10,000, Richard, and you're number one for this week. Thank you, Coach. Way to go. Good work. Give your own self a hand. Great work, guys. I was very excited. I won $10,000, and also I get rated number one, so that'll give a chance for whoever's in last place to pick me so I can fight for $25,000. Oh, my God. Hey. Mike, a delicate line here. Do you need me to help? Big office. Uh, what happened? I had a harness on, uh -huh. attached to a truck, uh -huh. pulling the truck. Yeah. It jolts me back off my feet, yeah. in my head a little bit. Were you knocked unconscious? No. When Lewis met the doctor, I was terrified. Just my heart was racing. I'm trying not to show him I'm so nervous to not make him worried. Can you feel me touch you? Yeah. Spread your fingers. Well, at the hospital, first thing I thought it was getting a concussion. Can you come and see me Tuesday? And uh, we'll determine whether you can compete or not. Being out of the competition just like that in a flash, this can't happen right now. Can I help you? I'm fine. You're fine? Yeah. What happened to you? I felt like I pulled something here. Like... So do you have pain now? Yeah, this could just put me out of the competition pack my bags and go home. That's the last thing I want to do. I come so far for me to just to get booted out because of a strained muscle. I mean, that would really just break my heart. Ah. Uh, that hurt, too. I think you pull a hamstring muscle. Yeah? Yeah. I'll see you a week from now, OK? I don't have a week right now. I only got a couple of days till the next competition or possibly the next fight. I think all I need is just to rest it, and I'll be good to go. It's very frustrating when he doesn't listen because it's not like they're telling him something that's not good for him. When he makes up his mind, that's it. Nobody's changing it. I, I see me tomorrow. We'll do that then, OK? All right, thank you. All right. If Mike is in the top three, he might get picked to fight. Just pray that you're not second or third or last. No, I hope I am second. I hope I am second. No, because then they're going to pick you. Good. OK, Mike. This competition, you must weigh between 163 and 175. I'm the smallest guy here. I gave an official weight for my pro debut of 145 pounds. So I'm coming up four weight classes. That's not an easy thing to do. I had a pretty big issue with weight, but I feel for Gil. He's still got to drop 10 pounds. If he doesn't get down to 175 by the weigh-ins, he's gone. He's disqualified. You got to eat a little something, Gil. I'm a piece of fruit, man, a banana or something. Gil and I, we got a great respect for each other because I think we're both proud Mexican boxers. Renee's a good stand-up guy. He's almost like a little brother to me. 
When I first got here, I, I was weighing about 190, so I'm going to do whatever it takes to, to make 175. I think Gil's going to an extreme at times. He will put the plastic suit on, run for a half an hour, an hour. It's really bad for your body. The plastic suit, it almost cooks your organs inside your body. Gil will actually be soaked with puddles. At times, he will be able to just pour it out, like water right from his body. Tommy, Lou, we have to rank him. I noticed Eric goes, he's losing weight. It seemed to me that he's getting in the ring, and after, as soon as he starts, it's went pretty good. It looks like he's drawn, too drawn. And I'm just wondering whether he's trying too hard to lose too much weight. I don't think Gilbert's going to make the weight. You don't think so, huh? I don't think so. I was watching this kid, Paul Shiner. He's one strong son of a gun. Welcome to the jam, Paul. I guess. He's all over the map. So what do we think of Rene? I think that, you know, his father did a great job with him, but I don't think he belongs here. I think he's, he's too young. He almost won the challenge. I have his gut feeling these guys are going to be on him like a, a hungry bulldog on a meatball. Otis Griffin, Triple OG. The kid, uh -huh. he's a hard worker in the gym. That young Holyfielders guy. Champ, Belay on corpse. Both of them got hurt in this competition. With the heart they got, I guarantee it'll be back. You know what, Lou? Champ, well, how about this? Let's change this up this week. Gentlemen, we have the rankings for the week. Mr. Perea, Mr. Bachman, you're in the winner's circle. Take your rightful place. Number one, Jimmy Mintz. The lowest ranked fighter in my mind is definitely Jimmy. Had he not won the challenge, that I'm sure he would have been ranked last. Well, I feel I should always be ranked in the top three. Even with my injury, I think I'm the most skilled fighter out there. Number two, Mr. Amigo. I think the weakest boxer might be Rene, but that's because of Rene's size. He's so small, and I just don't see how he can compete with us big guys. Number three. For the third week in a row, Mr. Griffin. He's an intimidating guy. He's got an intimidating look to him and attitude. We're going to do something different this week. The winners in the winner's circle will be choosing who's going to challenge to fight for survival. There's a little twist to it now. Now you got Fred and Dave picking the challenger. Who are they gonna pick to go in there and fight? You know, it probably won't be fair. It makes me feel good that I actually have a, a say in the ranking system. I think it was a bunch of BS. Pereira, Mr. Bachman, you think about it tonight and give us your decision tomorrow. Yes, sir. Good night, gentlemen. We're out of here. Nice. Following my footsteps. Fighters with the heart and desire to be stars. Great fighters. Fighters with the heart and desire to be stars. Heather Falls Casino Fight Night at Arco Arena, October 14th at 7.30 p.m. Featuring undefeated lightweight Armando Santa Cruz and Lamar Murphy. Tickets are on sale now through Ticketmaster or Arco Arena Box Office. Winter circle. We all went up into the loft and had to make a decision on who was going to fight. We got myself and Dave and Lance. We pretty much narrowed it down between Pauly and Gil. I uh, call the winner circle the circle of sin because they don't want to see the best man win. Or your guys' own safety. This is my strategy. To get Paulie in here. I like Paulie. I think he deserved the opportunity to get in that winner circle. And truthfully, it doesn't hurt to have somebody else in the winner's circle that you know your brother can take out when it comes time to him. This is another game. Gil asks us who we're going to take. And we say, all oh, man, Gil don't lose weight tonight. Gil goes back up to 185. This is a time to get him while he's weak. I wouldn't give Gil even an opportunity to make it into this room. So you give it to Paulie. Lance bonded with Paul early on and wanted Paul to be in the winner's circle. 
the employee deserves the opportunity to get in this room with you guys. My logic is this. It is very hard to manipulate the show by yourself. I need POA. I can trust. I can manipulate too. So that's why I'm working so hard to get Paul into the winner's circle with PJ, me, and Stephanie. I think we're, I'm going to win the show. I mean, you just worry about fighting. That's it. Let me worry about everything else. You worry about fighting. They you too. Hey, we, got smart, hey, we got smart people behind the scenes working for yeah, us. So I just trust that. You guys worry about fighting. What's up? What's up, bro? Dave and Fred pulled me aside and asked me if I was ready to fight. You want to fight on Thursday? I'll fight if I have to, of course. But, you know, I'm not as ready as I'd like to be. Definitely not. Paul, he is extremely nervous. I think he doesn't want to fight. I'm keeping it real with you. Oh, no, I know. I'm keeping it real with you. I think this is your best shot want to fight because I need some work. I need some extra time with the trainers. I mean, you got to eat up, man. Gil's having major problems with weight. If, if I could find out that he's still real heavy, we're going to pick him to fight. My gut feeling is telling me that you guys are going to pick me up. You know what I'm saying? That's not entirely true. I'm pretty confident that they're going to pick me. They don't think that I'll, I'll make weight. They don't know what kind of person I am. There is no not making way, I will make way. Everything happens for a reason. If it's my time, it's my time. So be it. Right, you know what I'm saying? And just hopefully nobody gets hurt. Thanks, man. It's very much. All right, man. All right, baby, take care. At the rankings, Tommy said for the people in the winner's circle, myself and Dave, that we would have to pick the last place person that would be fighting for survival. Brown, yes. Yes, you have a decision to make. Myself and David had to think of who would be the best matchup, but also someone that we could probably appreciate being in the room at the same time. You guys know we have been bestowed with the responsibility of choosing the person who's going to have to fight for survival. We have come to a decision. We've narrowed it down to two of you guys. I feel neither of them have really gotten along with Gilbert in particular, and Gilbert is struggling with weight, and they know that, and um, they're gonna call him out. Gilbert and Paul, I'll tell you. This has been a really tough decision for both of us to decide on, and uh, what it comes down to is, uh, Paul, I don't know, where your head is if you really want to fight out here. That's why I'm talking to you now, Gil. Gilly came into this training camp out of shape and heavy to come in 20 pounds overweight and expect to come in and fight strong. We think that would be a great opportunity for any of these top three guys to take you out. You're one of the biggest guys here. You're weak. We don't think you have anything left in you. right now because we want you at your best so you can get out of the ring Paul it's time for you to step up let's see what you got you got two minutes to choose your selection okay take it serious I have always been the underdog I always fight guys bigger than me and I wind up winning it's you it's on let's go fighting for survival for no money I'm gonna make the right decision for me it's gotta be Renee let's go Renee seems like the weakest link if Polly chose me thinking that I'm the weakest then he's in for a big big surprise you know something wicked his way is coming you ready to go to war I'm ready we have a fight gentlemen I'm ready to fight but wait till you see. It's worse than a hurricane or a tornado. I'm, I am the perfect storm. I come at you. I eat thunder and lightning. I uh, think this is a good matchup for you. We think you can win it. I agree. How are you feeling, though? Because last night, you seemed like you were a little uh, shot mentally. No, I feel good. I'm just going to relax. Good. And, uh, and stay calm, cool, and collected. Uh, the other night, when Dave and Fred asked me if I wanted to fight, I was exhausted when I gave my answer, and, but it's a different ball game. Today, I'm going to beat Renee. I'm going to knock this kid out. 
in the second round. Which bed do you think you would be interested in taking in the winner's circle? Oh, I think the one, where, where are you? I think the one closest to the wall. I know that a lot of eyes are really gonna be on me. It's uh, time to bring a little Latin flavor to the winner's circle. I just started writing down a list of, of Mexican champions. <laughs> Chavez, Sanchez, De La Hoya. There's so much more on the line every time a Mexican boxer fights. It's the pride and the representation of yourself and your people. Chucho Castillo, Rafael Herrera, Romeo Anaya, Zarate, Zamora, Ibaro Perez, they were world champions. You gotta win. You better win. <laughs> to the house because Paul said that he didn't think he was ready to fight. So I wanted to go over there and whip him into shape. What are you thinking, you know? I spoke to Lance last night and PJ when they came back and they were saying that he said you didn't know if you were ready to fight. I was like, what do you mean he said he didn't? Because I was so excited when they were like, it's they just, kicked. It's the, all, only because it was not, I didn't know how it would feel today because I was dehydrated yesterday after. Mm -hmm. Today I'm all right. I feel good. And you really feel confident that you can do this? I'm not overconfident, but I know no. this is like it. This is a good match. But I heard that he is a really skilled fighter. I don't care what he has. Okay, I'm just saying. No, I understand You that. know, I'm confident. looking forward to fighting. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. Okay. Stephanie was really uneasy and upset. She's more nervous than me, because if she has any doubt, that's going to hurt me in the long run. So now I'm, I'm feeling pretty scared. There's no reason for you to have any doubt. I don't have any doubt. Good. I don't want you to. And that's... I don't have any. How you doing? Good. How you doing? Good, man. How you feel? I feel good, man. I know what I'm gonna do. Good. You gotta get in there and just really just put the fear in them. Yeah. Keep believing in yourself. We believe in you. Me and me and Fred believe that you're gonna do this. That's why we put you in there, you know, for this fight, because we know you can win this fight. No, I know I'm gonna win. <clears throat> I've already won. Good. That's what I wanna hear, man. I've already won. There's nothing that could stop me. Good. It's already been set in motion. I'm glad to see you're ready. You're focused. That's good. This is what you came here for, baby. Time to get down, get loose, and get funky. It's going to be war. I can't stress enough how much of a war it's going to be. War. When I get in the ring, but I know my heart. That fear is what drives me. You should have to just get your distance. Boom, boom, boom. I consider myself a nice guy. When I get into the ring, as bad as it sounds, I am looking to hurt someone. I am the perfect storm. There's nothing you can do about it but prepare yourself for the destruction and devastation that it's going to produce. I'm just going to have to weather the perfect storm. When I punch someone, it feels like nothing else on this world now. On a clean connect, and you know you hit the sweet spot. Got it. 168. All right.